What's going on, guys? We've reached the end of the week. List the work week. So that means only one thing. It is time for last call. That's right. This is our FOC show, Final Order Cutoff. We are talking about comic books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night. We're not talking about DC books because they hit on Sunday night. But either way, what a long week, Jack. I am glad it yeah. has come to an end. So busy, we didn't even get a bolo show in this week. That's right. That's right. The last few weeks, honestly, have been kind of nuts. But uh, shifting schedules, a lot of changes. But we're getting there. We will catch up with you guys. We really take uh, the schedule as something uh, we know the importance of it and the consistency. And we'll, we'll be back to it. But we appreciate that everybody's here now for last call show because we know that that doesn't isn't just important on a week-to-week -week basis, right? These are 23 days ahead. Um, this is going to set up your next month. Um, so we want to make sure we get those pre-orders into your LCS or wherever you buy comics. Right. LCS, online, Black Cape Comics, all those are important. But we're going to get into our picks for Final Order Cutoff, starting right now with Spider-Woman number five. I first looked at this and was like, why so many covers? But it's not just Spider-Woman number five. We talk about monumental issues on this channel all the time. This is actually Spider-Woman number 100. Yeah, and normally I would say that that's a monumental issue, but I think that with all, this is of course legacy numbering, so where we're adding all of these different series together to equal one amalgamized um, 100 issue series. So the reality is um, the key to this this release is what you said, one word, covers. Um, that's what this book is all about. There's so many covers from A-list artists um, that that's definitely going to get the attention of the market. It's kind of a pick your poison and you get a little bit of everything, right? You've got, um, you've got some, some cover B kind of uh, cover price variants that are, are attractive. You've got some incentive variants that people are definitely going to chase. Um, and I've even seen the retailer exclusive variants leaking out there. Yeah. And I still think she's one of the most underrated people in the spider verse. Everyone thinks Gwen, everyone thinks silk. Um, you gotta go. You got the OG there. But either way, yeah, I'm picking the cover I like the best, and that's the one I'll order. Sticking with Marvel, stick within that Spider Verse, we get Venom number 29. Now we know this just this week, a big issue came out, and we talked about the advanced spoilers on that. But here we're getting number 29, and what are we expecting, Jack? Well, yeah, coming out of the, the previous issue, I think the biggest expectation is more information into kind of the Dylans, uh, what's going on there, um, how is this going to play out, um, how is the market going to receive all of this, and what's going to be the next big thing, right? Because it seems like that's the way Donnie does it, is there's like, oh, here's a reveal, and then here's the next tease. Um, and especially as we lead into uh, King and Black, I think we're going to get a lot of that. Uh, so that this is one of those ones, Brian, like I don't really have to sell it. Uh, it's more this series in Thor. It's more of a notification to the community. Like, hey, by the way, these titles are hitting FOC this week. Yeah, it's like, hey, in case you weren't aware. But yeah, right. the Dylans, man, Matt and Bob. <laughs> Hitting you with that trifecta with Marvel, we are coming with Werewolf by Night number one. Putting this on here mostly because we got a number one issue. Halloween's coming up, so we know horror comics. Part of the writing team on this is Black Eyed Peas member himself, Benjamin Jackoff. I mean, Jackadoff. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like a kid. You said Jackoff. <laughs> Yeah, and I think we're getting ready for Werewolf by Night. This is probably premature. Um, you and I had kind of talked off camera that, that this one probably won't be like a big booming new series that's going to be widely re received. But we know that Werewolf by Night is going to play into the upcoming Sony verse with uh, Morbius and Blade and uh, Tyrese, uh, the Tyrese casting. So um, 
it's one of those things where this may not be received well now, but keep an eye on those incentive variants. If they go too far under ratio, those are ones to maybe grab now because this isn't a character that's just been released um, frequently during the modern age of variants. There aren't a lot of uh, uh, variants out there. So I would pay attention to those ratio incentives if they get cheap enough. And it may not be immediately on release. It, it may not be right now at FOC, but it's something to start paying attention to. Yeah, I think my favorite cover is that, was that Okazaki variant, which I'm um, the butcher of names, so excuse me there. But um, yeah, you, you made a good point because I was thinking that as well. It's one of those things where we always talk about cover A a lot on here, especially for long term. I don't know if this is going to be a long term because there's so many great other werewolf by night, but you never know what's right. being adapted, what storylines are going to go from. And like you said, uh, incentive variants for some of these is usually kind of what, if anything catches a a little bit of a fire it's usually the incentives but either way one get make you the viewer aware werewolf by night new series is coming out in foc this monday shifting over to boom studios with their licensed property we have mighty morphin power rangers number 55 this is a pretty big issue right Oh, this one uh, seems to be a huge issue because we are getting a brand new Green Ranger. Now, we don't know the identity of this character, but we know that this has been heavily talked about uh, and a lot of people are paying attention to this. And not only that, this is the final issue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the, the kind of flagship series for Boom Studios, bringing the Power Rangers over um, and really giving a whole new shine to, the, to this in, uh television universe and kind of bringing them into the world of comics in the proper light and now we're getting not one but two series with mighty morphin and power rangers um so this is a big issue like we said first appearance major character uh a, one of the new main team members the green ranger um and uh on top of it a uh, final issue you know how those final issues can be a lot of times in comics Yes, yeah, definitely a big one to pick up, especially if you're a Power Rangers fan. I'm sure Power Rangers fans are already well aware of it. They're definitely ravenous about it between social media, between the Facebook groups, between the fan groups. Everyone's talking this title up, so it's one to be aware of. And like we said, it's hitting FOC this coming Monday. But now we want to shift into that indie showcase portion of the show. Where we're going to talk about some indie picks. This portion is, of course, brought to you by Black Cape Comics. BlackCapeComics.com, where you can pre-order any of the books we talk about on this show, as well as the ones in this indie showcase. We're we'll getting into it right now, starting with Scumbag number one from Image Comics. That's right. And it's required that you got to talk about these big Image number ones. You just never know with them. Uh, it's always like kind of playing the lottery. But what I really like to, to me, aside from kind of the premise, which gives you kind of a fear and loathing in Las Vegas sort of uh, feel and cover design, is that actual cover. That's one of those standout on the rack covers, that, that cover A. That's going to make people say, well, what is this book? And especially um, in the world of creator-owned comics where there can be a supply and demand issue, um, that's something to pay attention to. So if you're at all thinking about this book, that's why we talk about this stuff uh, during this show for FOC because they, you know these are not books you're going to want to wait till the day they release and then have to play games similar to what we saw this week with like Vault Comics' uh, Autonomal, um, which was going up for ridiculous prices because it just wasn't available. Yeah, cover A's, love that cover. And mm. one thing we haven't mentioned that might make a lot more fans want to pick this up is it's written by Rick Remender. Right, right. So you already know. And knowing is half the battle. But the next one we get to into the indie showcase we had this one originally on last week's last call. If you watch the indie showcase portion, I talked about two picks, but we only showed one. That's because I had to cut this out because, you know, FOC, sometimes they shift stuff around last minute. But we are talking about that something is killing the children, number 11. This is the start of a new arc and pretty big issue and some great covers, right? That's right. Yeah, start of a new arc. Um, definitely it's got people's attention uh, boom open this one up for retailer exclusive variants so there's definitely going to be an added uh, an eye on this one probably an increased print run but definitely one to pay attention to these incentives have been going for insane money um, 
I expect a lot of attention on the incentives for this one. Not only do we get a one in 25 instead of Brian, but we get a one in 100 incentive on this one. And a one in 50. That's right. That's right. So um, that is not typical of this series. And that one in 100, you're getting an homage to another James Tynan series with Department of Truth. Um, and, and I think that that tying into the Department of Truth number one, um, one in 100 variant, I think those are going to be very popular. Then the last one for the any showcase portion this week, we want to talk about Archie Comics, and we're talking about Madam Satan number one. This goes back to Sabrina, right? That's right. This is one of those ones that I like to talk about. This is why I like to have this show. Um, you know, I'm not going to say other people aren't going to cover it, but it's tough if you're watching one of those preview shows. It's like four hours long, and you're trying to, you know, figure out what are the ones to uh, to really pay attention to. So that's why we try to highlight certain picks for you and this is a pick that both brian and i like that we think will get overlooked by a lot of people and it's an archie number one but it isn't just an archie number one it's an archie number one within that chilling um adventures of sabrina universe that dark archie universe that more adult archie universe we've already seen adapted now in not one but two television shows on two different networks and um because of that well, i really think that the these uh, series are ones to pay attention to. And we've already seen like Jughead's mini series take off, and the number ones for that do really well. Um, there's no reason to believe you can't see that here, but we don't see people talking about it. There's a number of covers like Archie always does, regular price variants. Robert yeah, of Hack. course, with Sabrina, you always get that awesome Robert Hack. Yeah, and Robert Hack is always the standout book for me. Um, we saw it with Blossom Six 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 number one. The Robert Hack variant went up to like twenty dollars upon release. Um, not to say these won't come down, but this is really one to pay attention to. And here's another thing to think about, Brad. Um, Archie is a publisher that is an all ages publisher, even though these dark Archie books really aren't all ages, but they've never really put a lot of stock into the condition of their books. So this is a reason why pre-ordering is important is because if you're left looking for this one on release day and you're trying to pick on copies up from the shelf, who knows what you could be looking at? A, if you'll find copies, and B, if you'll find copies in any sort of condition. So that's why if you have a dealer that you can trust or you know is discerning about condition and quality, and I, I tell you there isn't too many that I can think of that would even come close to comparison to BlackCapeComics.com. Um, you know, and you, again, put your pre-order in. You can save 15% by pre-ordering before FOC. Um, you know, th this is one that you're going to want to lock in that FOC order if it's your type of either investment, read, or collectible. Yeah, this one's another one. The name of the A covers fire. That was a Julius Ota, mm -hmm. I believe the name is. And you talked about uh, scouring shelves at LCS's form. Next place they go to after that is you're going to see people posting, hey, Archie's website has them, <sighs> and I would avoid it all costs because they ship unbagged, unboarded, unprotected and you can guarantee that they will not be in great condition. So that's why we do this show. Get those orders in now. Get the pre-orders, guarantee your copies. Because this is one I could see maybe garnering some buzz on release day. That wraps up the Indie Showcase portion of the show. Again, presented to you by Black Cape Comics. They have a bunch of independent store exclusives up there. We love them for the Indie Showcase. They're, they're just like us. They love Indie Comics. They also have their own exclusive prints for a lot of their covers and other artists. But... You can get those as well as any of the books we've talked about on here. But we got one more thing to talk about, which we like to do at the end of this show. And that is those additional printings that are hitting FOC, right? That's right. It's become uh, kind of the key portion of this show with the way that late printings are moving. And this week, uh, again, no different. We got a big list. Um, we're looking at Cable number four, a second print coming from Marvel Comics. Excalibur number 12 coming with a second print. Uh, Mortal Hulk. Number 35 coming with a third print. Marauders number 12 coming with a second print. Miles Morales Spider-Man number 18 coming with a second print. Thor number seven coming with a second print. X-Men 12 coming with a second print. Uh, Once in Future number nine coming with a second print from Boom Studios. And also from Boom Studios, we only find them when they're dead. Number one comes in with a fourth printing. Be on the lookout for that one for sure. Yeah, so once again, make sure you guys get your orders in before this Monday night, whether it's through your LCS, whether it's online, wherever you get your orders through. These books are all hitting final order cutoff this Monday night, three weeks before release. So get those orders in. And with that being said, guys, it's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.